yes, quite charming. Bo, uh, my friend, if you wish to go around town, um, maybe you could do something for your, um, shall we say, uh, you know, look. He's telling you to buy pants. Yes. <laughs> Over women Shorter in this place, so quickly, we, you must buy you pants. Shorter I mean, uh, Benny, Benny didn't want to make a scene out of it, but um, uh, did uh, something happen? Or uh, you just felt hot today? Uh, what's the deal here? What is Benny missing? I'm sure <laughs> by his appearance you have guessed his ancestry by now. Um, well, it's uh, kind of hard. That kind of thing. If you want to make uh, a big splash in the circus scene, Benny can arrange that, by the way. <laughs> I just glare at him. Okay, okay, bad idea. Benny was just kidding. Or was he? Aha! <laughs> Relax, muscle guy. It's just that around here people tend to wear clothes. Or at least more clothes than you are. Uh, it's such a hassle, though. I mean... All of the uppityness of the... No. What a hassle. What a hassle. I mean, if it was armor, I could see, but all the squishy, squishy shenanigans that their fairy friends over here wear are unnecessary. Really? So if I were to pr prance around butt naked, that would not distract you in the least? No. Oh my! I don't see why it matters. You distract me, Iris says from above. You southerners are so... Alicia stares at Fenon very closely. Hmm. Perhaps you're not into women. He just cocks his head. And why do you think that? Well, most men would find me butt naked distracting. Uh, perhaps it just comes down to you're not that interesting to look at, but naked. Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it's got burned. And on that note, Benny is gonna bow his head politely. I see that you're busy. Perhaps it's time Benny took his leave. Cheerios then, and he starts leaving. Fucking coward. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get some ice at this table? Someone just got burned. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Benny is getting the fuck out of there, but before he leaves, he waves over the waiter and says that uh, he's gonna take care of the bill so you guys can have some fun, and then he leaves. Right, so in the meantime, Fiorin and Iris, you leave the tavern and head to the other side. The place is pretty lively, but for all the wrong reasons. People are not lively because they're having uh, excellent food, enjoying the drinks and talking at the tables. No. There is one man who's the center of attention. And that's the man sitting in the middle, which is quite distinct from all the others. You see a man uh, uh, with uh, white hair, with many weapons on his back and side, and quite a lot piled up on the chair next to him. He's uh, enjoying a meal after just finishing a small tussle, presumably connected to the broken window and the guy outside who's out cold. He's just quietly having a meal with nobody else uh, bothering uh, him at the moment. Well, a lot of eyes are on him and quite expectant and hoping for something else to happen to liven up the evening. <laughs> um, Alright, I, uh, I want to cautiously approach the table, simply mindful of how he reacts. He spares you a glance and continues eating. Are you the one that they call the Collector? He looks at you for a second, then he runs his eyes uh, up and down you, like clearly sizing you up. He then just nods and continues eating. Uh, could I perhaps trouble you for a bout? I hear that you're 
particular set of skills are impressive. He again stops eating and looks at you for a second. He scratches uh, his chin for a second and drops his food. He then slowly starts getting up from his seat. You see the crowd is clearly getting excited. Uh, without saying anything, he motions uh, with a head jerk towards uh, the door and starts heading outside. I simply follow suit. Oh boy. You see the, the crowd is already starting to jeer. Oh, he's gonna fight again, he's gonna fight again. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, they start cheering. They even start, some of them even start cheering for you because they're clearly excited that somebody has the balls to challenge the guy. I'm just gonna relax back on the chair, just leaning back, feet up on the table, just watching. I'm gonna patiently... As you guys... Oh, sorry. No, oh, keep uh, keep going, finish. I've got something to do anyway. Oh, I was just gonna... Basically, I'm just, like, trailing behind him, like, a good distance back as to, like, make it clear that I'm not challenging him as well, but I'm just kind of keeping an eye on him. As soon as uh, the guy steps outside, you see a natural circle beginning to form around him. Some of the city guards, rather than trying to, quote-unquote, break this up, they're literally standing as shields and they're preparing the people for the spectacle that's about to happen. This is clearly something that they've done before. And eventually, as you step into the circle with him, the people start to cheer even louder and louder. Everybody waits with bated breath as the collector starts reaching for a weapon. The weapon he reaches for is actually this one. The sword that, oddly enough, looks like a giant comb. And as he pulls it, Everybody sighs or glued on what he's gonna do next. The guy casually uses the giant sword comb to comb his hair back so it doesn't get in the way. And then puts it away. <laughs> no, you're fucking with us, right? He doesn't use the sword break as a comb, right? That's exactly what he just did. Oh my fucking god. He's psyching <laughs> you out! <laughs> After that, he continues by cracking his neck and cracking his knuckles and starts to randomly reach uh, for his back, uh, to his back for a weapon. You see that um, by the expression on his face, that was clearly a weapon he pulled at random because he immediately realizes that this weapon is a poor match for you considering what weapon you have. The weapon he pulled is twin throwing axes, but these are not normal axes. They are connected with a very thick and heavy chain. This is an exotic type of weapon that you've actually never seen anybody use. However, you're quite experienced with uh, throwing axes. You know you've definitely got an advantage over him when it comes to uh, raw power. These things are not meant to handle in a fight. They're meant for throwing, after all. So you have a pretty good idea of where your edge is going to be. If you're getting close enough, he's going to be at a huge disadvantage. Fair. The problem is he knows that too. You notice that rather than throwing the axes, he starts uh, uh, mulling the chain over his uh, hands left and right until eventually he starts spinning it with momentum rather than throwing the axe. He seems battle ready. What do you do? Uh, I kind of crack my neck back and forth. Take a, just a big sigh as if even though this is something that I posed myself, it is still a hassle. Uh, the tattoos around uh, my arms and uh, torso start to start to shift as I go into a rage. I uh, grip my great axe in both hands and prepare to uh, have a have a throwdown. The guy violently stomps on the ground, uh, causing a small tremor, and with a battle cry. He provokes you. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Romeo will save. Uh, wisdom? Yeah, that would be wisdom. Got it. 16. Uh, you fear, uh, uh, you feel a wave of fear wash over you, but you shrug it off. This guy clearly tried to shake you in your boots, but that shit's not gonna work on you. You, you faced some mean ass tough bastards and this is not your first. You shrug it off and you keep your composure. What do you do? 
Uh, I charge in uh, with the attempt to drop kick him right in the chest. Uh, also, before uh, we continue any further, be warned that this is uh, an honor duel, so unless something else is mentioned, this is not to the death and the rules apply a bit differently. You will be losing HP as normally, but it will be under different rules. You will not actually take uh, significant damage and the battle ends when somebody gets a clear advantage. You know what I mean by that. Wait, you're trying to do an unarmed attack? Ooh, I gotta see this. Yep, I am flying straight in. Drop kick to the chest. Do it. Wait, why are you tr you tr trying to do one d four of damage? <laughs> so just a uh, seventeen that actually hits. All right. So roll your damage. Oh, I should have re attacked recklessly. That would have been better. So ten damage. Isn't it ten plus two? Uh, Wait, two is for the crit. you have 1d6 worth of unarmed damage? Oof. No, that's uh, that's not lethal, though. He can only do non-lethal since he hasn't doesn't have your specialization as a monk. Yep. Hmm. But in this duel, it doesn't matter. It's still as good a damage as any. You immediately dart in and uh, drop kick him right in the chest. The guy seems to have underestimated uh, your bulky size for... Uh, uh, and didn't uh, prepare for how fast you are. You nail him straight on. He takes it and uh, he takes it with a stride, barely taking a step back before he recovers and plants his feet firmly on the ground. After Can another I... battle cry, he's, he sends the chain your way. Let's see. Does 16 hit you? Nope. Nope. As his chain starts going your way, you quickly raise your weapon, not repelling the chain away. However, as he follows up, rather than with the chain, he grabs the chain by the middle and starts spinning. The axes at both uh, ends uh, start to skillfully spin around him in a deadly vortex. Luckily, all the people are standing way back, so they're fine. However, you're right in the eye of the storm and the axes start uh, flying all, all around you. Alright. Right, so since 16 didn't hit you, the two follow-up attacks don't hit you as well. The axes start coming from different angles around you, but you manage to use your own weapon to knock them around and parry them. However, now that uh, he is spinning the chain around, if you want to get in again, you are gonna have to give him an attack of opportunity, unless you stop uh, him from spinning the chain. That's fine, I'm going straight in. Reckless attack. Two giant swings at it. Do it. Alright, uh, attacking recklessly means I get advantage. So, I'm gonna assume a 26 hits. Yep. So, first attack, 12 damage. Second attack is a 26 again. Yep. For another 17. As you dart in, let's see, his axe, uh, his axe comes in at an unexpected angle from your blind spot. Does 18 hit you? No. Your battle instincts take over and you immediately duck, all, uh, duck under as the, as the battle axe comes uh, flying in. And then you immediately dart in with two attacks. You start slashing and hacking. He is getting away from the blows by the skin of his teeth. You're clearly getting a huge advantage. He stops spinning the chain and instead instead tries to hook it around uh, your legs. Uh, what's your CMD? What is the CMD? Uh, not a thing in uh, definition. Wait, does the system not have CMD? No. No. I don't know what it stands for. Otherwise, I could guess the equivalent. Uh, which means the essentially it here. was your grappling and floor based like so, bonus. It, so about so the same usually for fighters, shit for mages. So acrobatics or athletics? Uh, just a sec. Uh, give me a sec guys, uh, I'm having some computer issues. They basically issues. replaced it with athletics. Can you guys hear me now? Okay, uh, Firion, uh, roll me acrobatics. 
acrobatics. Eighteen. Right. Uh, he hooks the chain around your uh, uh, around uh, your legs and yanks it hard, knocking you flat on your ass. And as he does that, he prepares it for another swing around to come crashing down on you. Let's see. Does 18 hit you? 18 does not. He slams the chain hard, but you roll on your side. You're still on your back, though. What do you do? I immediately kick for his leg. Trying to not, trying to knock him down as well. Uh, okay, that's gonna be a combat maneuver, though. I have no okay, idea what I add to that. After what happens. Uh, roll what? Well, since you're prone, I'm gonna say that you're at a minus two. Okay, um... I have no idea what a combat maneuver roll is, either. Uh, make me uh, just a normal roll. Okay. Well, 1d20. Plus, if you want my strength added to that, I don't know. I rolled a 15. Uh, well then, athletics I have a plus 8 too. So that's so 23, right? Minus 2, which you said, so 21 would be the total. Yeah. yeah, but since this is a combat maneuver, I'm gonna say that you're actually going to fail this one because that's kind of his specialty. As you try to kick, he immediately jumps over your attempt and he uh, continues standing up over you. Rather than follow through though, he takes uh, a step back and starts uh, uh, to roll his chain again, gaining momentum. He's giving you a chance to get up, but right. he's clearly uh, ready for as soon as you get up. Oh, All by right. the way, if you want to look at actual combat maneuvers, have a look at the Battle Master class for Blan now. So, Furion, are you gonna get up? Yeah, I get up. Uh... Okay, and, what do you do? Uh, I'm going to make a fainting attack by throwing one hand axe at him, just like, uh, to get him to have to bring something up to block, and then run in for another swing with my great axe. Okay, okay, let's see what happens. So, hand axe... 11 points of damage, and recklessly attacking again with the great axe. Uh, 14 probably doesn't hit. Yeah, no. Uh, when you throw the hand axe at him, he uses the momentum from uh, spinning his chain around to immediately knock it out of the air. And as you're going in for the second attack, he just sidesteps you, and he fully counterattacks with all the momentum that he had built up. Alright. 19 hit you? What number? 19. It does not. <laughs> so, both okay. his attacks missed. That was actually his good attack. Uh, as he starts spinning around, he makes uh, three attacks. And all the axes start flinging all over the place. Your eyes can't track them, but your battle senses kick in, and you manage to avoid all uh, of his attacks. Think to cheer madly at this point because in that vortex of death you seem to be dodging like uh, you're made out of water or something. It's amazing. The crowd is cheering like mad for you right now. Um, all right, I want to use my the just the length of the the arm of the great axe to catch to try to hook it through the axis so that he can no longer swing. Basically, wrap. The uh, that's gonna be incredibly difficult telling you right that's now. That's okay. I'm going for it. <laughs> what kind of, uh, role do I need for that? Uh, make me a normal attack roll, see if you can get, uh... Just with my great axe, alright. Something done. Yeah, do 24. it. 24. Nope. No, even 24 is not gonna do it. That's not gonna work. Uh, right. so let's see... Uh, as you, as you uh, attempt to stop his momentum, he slams his foot down and he actually uh, lets out a battle cry. He is entering a rage-like like state just like you. And he actually crits! Oh ho, here we go! 
Nice. As you're expecting the Rip. axis momentum to start swirling around you, this time he uh, catches you completely by surprise because he actually takes both axes without uh, uh, dropping the chain in one smooth motion and he crashes both of them hard against you. You dodge with your weapon by the skin of your teeth, but he knocks you a good five or six steps back before you can actually reco uh, recover from that blow. In total, 46 damage. Have because I'm raging, so 18. Alright. Okay. <sighs> Alright. Uh, seeing that he finally hit for the first time, and uh, the place where he seemed to struggle the most was when I was right in his face, I'm gonna say hello right again in his face. Two attacks. Swinging away. Uh, reckless. So, 22. For 10. And again, 17. Does a 17 hit? Nope. Right. Not anymore. So just the first one. Uh, as you go in, you strike again on, uh, on his chest, but he quickly shrugs off the blow. He tosses the axis directly in the air above you and yanks the chain, pulling the axis uh, to strike you from the back. 21 does it. So that's only one attack that gets you. The axis come from a very awkward angle from behind you and when the, with the enemy right in front of you you decide that it's a terrible idea to reposition since uh, he'll probably strike from the front. And thus the axes that come from behind you immediately take you by surprise, hitting you for another 16 damage. All right, so minus eight, all right. All righty, and... Uh... Doing, still doing the thing I do best, gonna swing away right in his face, keep as much uh, pressure on him as I can. So, 23, does that hit? That hits. Alright, that's, oh, 19, finally rolling some damage. And one more, 27. For, for another 14 damage. He shrugs off the first uh, blow with ease, but with the second one he's beginning to struggle. You lock blades and under the constant battering you see that one of the hand axes that he blocked you with begins to crack. As soon as he sees his weapon beginning to crack, he immediately jumps away from you. Can I make an attack of opportunity as he leaves my range? No, you see that he is clearly disengaging. Okay. As he sees his weapon beginning to crack, you see that uh, he is visibly starting to calm down, giving you an indication that he is done fighting. He reaches uh, into one of his pockets and takes out a small pouch full of golden-like dust. All right. uh, some of you may know that this is a very special and rare repair powder that's very good against uh, damaged but not broken weapons. It's also extremely expensive. So it's basically stuff that, uh, apart from Paladins, few people actually can afford to use. Broken uh, hand axe uh, with uh, some of the repair powder, and you see that in, in mere moments the, the axe is back to almost pristine condition. As he repairs the weapon, he, uh, he, comes, uh, he walks forward towards you with the twin hand axes and the chain connecting them, and holds them uh, uh, in front of you. With his free hand, he reaches for uh, his uh, jugular area and you see with one finger he's pressing down on his forex and you hear a uh, very strange, almost metallic-like voice as he says, to the victor, go the spoils. We will meet again. Thank you, it was my pleasure. Uh, by and, uh, the way, I actually had a voice clip for that, but unfortunately Roll20 refuses to play it, so if somebody wants to hear what exactly he sounds like, I'm gonna send that in Skype, so you can hear his voice. Is it like the terrible anti-smoking commercials? Video. 
After leaving you with those brief words, he just nods and leaves the bat the throwing axes and the chain with you. After that, he starts heading inside the tavern to finish his meal with the crowd starting to cheer like mad for you. Who is that guy in the loincloth? He's amazing! Oh, oh. He should get See, dressed now it's my for oh. signature <laughs> See now it's my signature thing. Now I can't get dressed. They know me as the loincloth guy. No. You're getting dressed. Wear clothing. By the way, I'm, I'm so used to this to my advantage. It says, yes, yes, I'm... It's like, yes, everybody calm down. <laughs> I'm just gonna, um... Just gonna approach him. And basically just, like, examine the weapon, I guess, without touching it. Uh, Firion, these are normal throwing axes, so they have the same damage modifiers and stuff that with the normal ones, but because of the chain, they have some added properties. When you throw this weapon, as a free action, you can yank the chain and immediately get the throwing axe back unless it's stuck into something. So you don't have to recover them anymore. Plus, you can use the chain to do a tripping maneuver. Sounds good. Nice. So you can write down in your, uh, that in your possessions. You just got one of the collector's weapons. Alright. We're just gonna look up at... Um, also, in the party journal under Fierce. Renown, you can mark yourself as having beaten the collector once. Alright, well do. Alright, um... We're just gonna look up at Theron and say, That was good. Now we need to buy you pants. Yes, that is very important to all of us. Um, I think it's more important to you guys than to me. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's fine. Vera's obviously got a nice fashion sense. She'll make sure you got something nice that wasn't in character. Um, She'll get him pink pants. I'm not gonna get him pink pants, I'll just be weird. Wait, anyway. what's wrong with pink? Well, I need to get him something that complements his skin tone and tattoo colors. Are you saying and pink doesn't aesthetic. go with blue? I'm saying, like, hot pink would not go with his skin color. Sorry, who said anything about hot pink? Oi, mate, I'm the one buying the fucking pants. If you want to buy the pants, you can pick out what color they are. Yeah, okay. Deal. Anyway. So, um, can I... Are there any, like, stores that sell pants open? Not this late at night, no. Fine. I guess that's something we'll do tomorrow. So, I'm assuming that, uh, with all the commotion out of the way and Firion getting pride away from uh, his newly found uh, fan base in town, <laughs> you guys return to the tavern where you're gonna have a lovely meal and probably uh, hoof it back to the Noble Moon Tavern or back to Iris' place to spend the night. Where, hey! What? Twice? <laughs> <laughs> you got two <laughs> 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 <laughs>